things mm. happening. But it's really important to contextualize this. We are where we are now because of the pandemic response. You know, we have high inflation, okay? Uh, we've got a cost of living crisis. And unarguably, you know, a major contributing factor to that is a huge amount of quantitative easing at a time when the economy was shut down. We also have a tragic level right now of excess deaths, which the media is not really scrutinizing in the same way that they did when there were excess deaths caused by COVID. Where's the investigation into all the people dying? Um, I think, you know, in the last 19 weeks, we've had something like 10,000 more deaths than we would expect compared to pre-pandemic years. There's also a mental health, depression, educational crisis going on. All of these are related to the pandemic, but also to the pandemic response. So we are where we are now because of what happened. So the danger with the inquiry is that we look back at what I'm happened. Quite quite as well. I'm just quite keen as well. Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you, but now. just... Yeah, just, just to add to that, uh, children as well. I mean, I've been hearing reports, and I've even reported on it myself, about, in some cases, early years children going to school after the first couple of years of their life being in lockdown, unable to walk or talk or communicate properly. I mean, I'm concerned that this inquiry might end up just being some kind of lovey whitewash that basically says we should have locked down harder, faster, quicker and for longer. And indeed, actually, we should have seen this coming a long time ago. I absolutely share your concerns. But let's not forget, children were not in the terms of reference in the first draft of the COVID inquiry. And in fact, it was due to the campaigning of certain individuals and organisations, including us for them, that the terms of reference were widened to include children. So now it's going to look at early years in education and mental and physical health. And that's really, really important. Now, I submitted my own evidence um, and recommendations for the terms of reference, which have not been taken on board, that the, that the inquiry should also look at the behavioral science approach. Now, back at a number 10 briefing in 2020, um, in March 2020, Michael Gove said, this virus does not discriminate. Well, they knew then, and we know now, that the virus does discriminate. In fact, it was highly stratified according to age and clinical condition. And yet, yet there was a campaign that pressed ahead with the public saying that all age groups were at risk. We know that fear and other behavioral science techniques were deployed in order to encourage people to follow the rules. Now, all of that was done outside of a robust ethical framework or cost-benefit analysis, and very importantly, without the public's consent. So I'm worried that none of that will be looked at. Um, furthermore, well, you know, on top of that, well, to, I think it, that we need to look very quickly, to look Laura, further on, very ahead, quickly. actually, sorry, to a new public health act. We need to make sure that the things that happened before don't happen again.